telephone me here. I waited two hours for you. Why didn't you come? I'm sorry. I, I took some luminol after lunch and fell asleep. Good heavens, it's after six. I finished the portrait. I wanted you to be the first to see it. Oh, Clive, I'll, I'll come tomorrow, I promise. A few weeks ago, you wouldn't have stood me up. I told you, I fell asleep. Oh, Clive, I'll come tomorrow, about five o'clock. Oh, darling, I must go now. Goodbye. Sarah, come in. Darling, this is ghastly. Is everybody arriving? No, not yet. But still, you look lovely. <laughs> All set for the witch's Sabbath. I came early in case you needed some help. Why on earth should I need help? Apart from the fact that I'm rather short of money, as usual, I haven't a care in the world. <laughs> yes, you know how mean my darling husband is. Robert, me. Oh, well, considering he practically owns a bank. Well, that doesn't mean he can just dip into the till whenever he feels poor. <laughs> Darling, how angry you look. My dear Sarah, it doesn't matter how extravagant you are, as long as your husband never finds out. <laughs> That's one of the first lessons you'll learn when you marry. Anyway, I always manage to raise the money somehow. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to be at my best. Robert's wife. Demure, charming, and just a little elusive. You see, do be careful. Supposing you should find out. <laughs> Robert, we're ready, darling. Darling, you look lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, Sarah. How about one of my Borgia specials? Gilbert's in the drawing room, darling. Oh. Robert? Anything wrong? How are you, Gilbert? Oh, moderately flourishing. Only moderately? Oh, good heavens. Don't tell me the bank's going bust. I simply couldn't bear it. You know, it always surprises me that after ten years as a banker's wife, you seem to imagine the bank is some sort of private mint. <laughs> Why not? Money is for spending, not for locking away. Robert? Who else is coming? Robert, who else is coming? Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. Just the Langfords. Mr. and Mrs. Langford. Lucille. Oh, hello, Nella. Darling. Forgive me if I cling to my bit of ermine until I thaw out. The car's laid up and we had to come by bus. Much as I adore my virile husband, he just doesn't seem to be the kind of man who can ever get a taxi. There wasn't one. Not one that would stop for you. Oh, nonsense, Nella. John's always got shelves of taxis whenever I've been with him. Really? Must be me, then. I happen to draw a lure. Hello, Robert. I love your dress, Lucille. <laughs> Thank you. Bought it off the peg, didn't you, darling? Yes, it, uh, it was quite a find, wasn't it? Oh, I wish I knew a peg like that. What's his name? Christian Dior. <laughs> Hardly. 
I'm always telling Nella that a woman doesn't have to wear a model dress to catch the eye. She doesn't have to wear anything to catch yours. How's that handsome son of yours? We're enjoying himself up at Oxford. His latest plan is to become a fashionable barrister, specializing in divorce. Why, he could have a much more exciting time at the criminal bar defending murderers. Well, perhaps he doesn't want to defend murderers. Perhaps he'd rather see them hang. I can't say that I approve of divorce, either. But you're a widower, Gilbert. You might think differently if you were still married. Well, I prefer murder to anything so tame and negative as divorce. If John were ever unfaithful to me, I wouldn't divorce him. I'd simply crack his head open. Thanks for the warning, my love. How about you, Robert? Would you rather kill Lucille or divorce her? I hope I shall never have to make the choice. <laughs> so do I. Really, Nella gets worse and worse. She used to be so amusing. Now she's never anything but aggressive and malicious. If John wasn't a business friend of yours, I wouldn't have her in the house. I just don't understand her. Robert, what is the matter? You've been absent-minded all the evening. I had rather a worrying day at the bank. A lot of things seem to go wrong all at once. Oh, darling. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. It's getting late, man. Better get some sleep. Robert, what is it? There is something different about you. You're trying to avoid me. Must the whole world revolve entirely around you? Your world must. I do love you, darling. You know that, don't you? Hello? Sarah. Lucille. Sarah, I must see you. I think I'm probably going to need your help. I'll come around tomorrow about six. What is it, Lucille? I, I can't talk now. Well, what's wrong? Is it Robert? Yes, but he's had some letter tonight, and I'm sure it's about me. Sorry I disturbed you. <laughs> I was talking to Sarah. We were cut off. Oh, well. Never mind. I'll leave it. You're late. It's half past five. Clive, I'm terribly sorry. I just couldn't get a taxi anywhere. I've run nearly all the way. Well, why did you cut across the line? It saves you half an hour. Oh, dear Clive, don't be so absurd. I can just see myself dodging across the railway lines in high heeled shoes. I'm so excited about the portrait. Let me see it. In a minute. Oh, no, now, please. The light's fading. It doesn't show it at best. Clive, it's, it's horrible. I knew you'd say that. But an artist has to paint what he sees. Not only the body, but the soul. But I haven't got a soul like that. It, it's cruel and humiliating. Clive, what made you do it? For months now, I've helped to support you. I paid your bills as you could work without worry. Well, what's that got to do with this? You believed in my talent. You enjoyed having a tame protégé to worship at your feet. I had no idea you hated me so much. I hate you because you're the most tantalizing, most provocative, most adorable woman I've ever met. That's what I've tried to interpret. Look at the eyes. The aloofness, the mystery. They're the eyes of a woman with many secrets to hide. It 
It's my anniversary present to Robert. It's a surprise. I'll hate it. No, you won't. It'll bewilder him, intrigue him. You want to talk to me about it. It'll be amusing. Why? Because I shall tell him that in spite of all your avowals of love and affection, you're really quite heartless. That in fact you've already discarded your once beloved Clive for... But I haven't. Look, Clive, I've always told you I didn't want us to get too involved. I've never loved you. I've always told you that. Love isn't the only thing that draws people together. No, apparently not. You've always accused me of being cold. You've even painted me that way. But I haven't changed, darling. It's all in your imagination. Well, I, I must go now. I'm, I'm meeting someone. John Langford? Please stay. Darling. Please. You'll have to get used to it. Just as I have. Darling, I, I really must go now. Oh, you're hurting me. It's my brooch. We'll take it off. Oh, you, you, you tore my dress. Well, I don't know what Robert will think of the portrait, but perhaps you'll bring it round to the house on Friday, will you, darling? I'll give you the money then. It was uh, 200 we said, didn't we? Yes. Please. Goodbye, darling. See you soon.
Good evening, sir. Bring me some whiskey, if it may please. Very good, sir. Is Mrs. Ames at home here? No, sir. She ordered dinner for eight o'clock. Shall I serve dinner, sir? No, I'll wait. Just bring the whiskey, sir. Inspector, to see you, sir. Police? Mr. Ainsworth? Hi, Detective Inspector Marshall. This is Sergeant Berry. I'm afraid we've got some bad news for you, sir. There's been an accident and a lady's been killed. Some letters and papers in her handbag. We believe she's your wife. <laughs> Bump my head getting into my car this evening. Naturally, we'll want you to come down with us and identify the lady. But why are you here? A detective? What? The doctor's report hasn't come through yet, sir. But the cause of death appears to be strangulation. Strangled? You see? Well, shall we go? Yes. Yes, of course. The man was walking across the heath with his dog. It started to bark. He went to investigate. Found her. But why? Why would she be on the heath? Unless she was killed somewhere else and carried there? No, sir. She was on the heath. Mr. Marshall has her handbag, sir. But apart from a letter and a couple of receipts, the rest of the contents are missing. Then it must have been robbery. They left a diamond wristwatch and a diamond bracelet. Could you give us a list of the contents of your wife's handbag? No, but I dare say our maid would know. Thank you, sir. There is one other thing. There was a slight tear in her dress of the neck here. Would you know if by any chance your wife was wearing a brooch? Brooch? Yes, a cameo brooch. I noticed it at tea. A large cameo. She often wore it. She was very fond of it. Thank you, sir. This way, please. Come in. Uh, Mr. Ainsworth, sir. Sit down, Mr. Ainsworth. I'm afraid I have to ask you a few questions. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I know. I'm... I'm sorry. When did you last see your wife alive? Um... Mr. Ainsworth, I'm asking you, when did you last see your wife alive? I know it's sudden, but we must have your help in tracing her movements today. Yes, yes, I, I'm trying to think. It was about tea time. We had tea together. She was then going round to see a friend of Miss Haywood about five o'clock, so she said. She left the house about quarter to five. I didn't see her again until... till now. Why do you say, or so she said? Had you reason to suspect she was lying? No, indeed. Certainly not. But in view of what happened, I wondered... Oh, we can see Miss Hayward later. Can you think of anyone who might want to harm your wife? No, of course not. She was very friendly with everyone. Can you think of any reason why she should have been on the heath after dark? Had she friends in that neighborhood? I can't think of any who live on the other side of the heath. When you say the other side, to which side do you refer? Well, I naturally don't know in which direction my wife was walking, but I think I'm safe in saying that we haven't any friends who live close to the heath on any side. What were you doing between tea time and nine o'clock, Mr. Ainsworth? After my wife went out, I worked in my study till six o'clock. Then I got out my car and went round to see my business manager, Gilbert Morgan. I arrived at about 6.15 and stayed until just before nine o'clock. We had business to discuss. When you got home, were you surprised to find your wife was still out? Naturally. But you were an hour late yourself, so your butler said. Uh, yes, yes. I had a great deal to talk about to Mr. Morgan, and we rather forgot the time. I suppose my wife forgot it too. Your wife was dead, Mr. Ainsworth. Well, that'll be all for now. Sergeant Berry will take a detailed statement from you in the morning. Meanwhile, we'll fix some transport for you, get you home. Do you know 
Why she was killed? We haven't had time to find a motive yet. We'd better make a thorough examination of the heath at first light in the morning. Don't leave your house without letting us know where we can get you, will you? I know. Good night. Good night. Hello? Gilbert, Robert here. Have the police been to see you? Police? No, why? I can't tell you over the phone, but get round here as soon as you can. It's desperately urgent. Very well. Right, well, I'll get a taxi and come right away. I'll be with you in about ten minutes. No, no. Walk here. Come in by the garden. I'll leave the door open. I'll be in my study. Right you are. Goodbye. I could see them in the distance. The two of them. My first impulse was to beat the man's brains out, and I started after them. Then I stopped and got hold of myself. I thought, perhaps he isn't her lover. Perhaps there's some other explanation. I decided to wait till she got home and challenge her, see what she had to say. I got back into the car. I meant to go straight home, but I couldn't. I drove out along the great north road, hell for leather. Then I stopped. After a bit, I cooled off and turned round and, and drove home. I didn't kill her, Gilbert. I know that, Robert. What a dreadful thing. Poor Lucille. It's... it's unbelievable. Gilbert, I told the police I was at your flat from quarter past six till nine o'clock with you. I was taking a chance on your being there. But why didn't you tell them the truth, what you told me? How could I? I was there when it happened. They would have arrested me on suspicion. Please back me up. I know it's a lot to ask. Isn't that? After all you've done for me in the last 15 years, it's not that. It is, I... I don't think it's wise, Robert. I can't go back to the inspector now and tell him I was lying. No, I see that. Fortunately, I was at home all the evening. So it is a possible alibi. All right, I agree. Yes, I'll do it. But our stories must agree. Find anything? No, nothing yet. Well, sir, any prints the man may have made, the rain's washed out. Yeah, there's nothing much to show up on this rough grass anyway. There's only the imprints of her heels. Seems to have come up from the road to the pond and then caught it on the way back. Mm. It's odd the way she was tacking about, wasn't it? Then she got lost in the dark. Oh, we'll find out. I want this area combed thoroughly, and I want that pond dragged. What for, sir? Contents of a handbag. I don't think it was robbery, do you, sir? No, no, that was a blind. Clumsy one at that. If he's after anything, it was probably a letter or a diary. Something would incriminate him. He took the lot to cover up. <laughs> Surgeon's report's come through, sir. Asphyxia due to manual strangulation. Never salt or anything like that. Mm, too bad. Estimated time of death, 7 p.m. Seven checks with her broken watch. No prints on her handbag, sir, except her own. And the lab says the murderer was wearing gloves. And they're sending down some fragments of material caught from one of her broken fingernails. Good, we can use a clue. I've got a photograph over here, sir. Now, this the camo brooch? Yes, sir. Another nice girl with no men friends. Why don't you quit the police and get a job with the news of the world? I've got a list of the contents of her bag, sir, from her maid. All the usual things. Yes, sir, but all gold. All mm. valuable. Right. You know Ainsworth's collapse, sir? No. Yeah, the doc wouldn't let me near him for a statement. Must be the shock, I suppose. A fright. Later. Oh, just Later, boy. Mr. Ainsworth isn't allowed to see anyone, sir. Doctor's orders. We shan't disturb him.
Carry on. I don't think we've met. My name's Sarah Hayward. I'm a great friend of the Ainsworths. Ah, Rigby, what is that room? Mrs. Ainsworth's private sitting room, sir. Should have been sealed. Who locked the door? The officer who came last night, sir. He only sealed Madam's bedroom suite. You should go far. Take a look at the bedroom suite and then uh, get statements from the servants. Okay. Mrs. Ainsworth and I are, well, I mean, were very old friends. There was a photograph of us taken last year at Cannes. That's all I was looking for. Mr. Ainsworth gave me permission to take it. Try again, Miss Hayward. Well, the key's always kept in that little silver box. Did she keep a diary? No, she was much too... Careful. Oh, no letters, no diary. Careful and secretive. Hmm? She was a very contradictory person. So spontaneous in some ways and so discreet in others. It was a letter you were looking for, wasn't it, Miss Hayward? Who from? I was afraid she might have kept something I didn't want Mr. Ainsworth to see. Why? You want to protect him? Who's the man? I don't know. There were so many. But if you think Robert found out and murdered her because... Mr. She... Ainsworth has an alibi, Miss Hayward. I don't question it. Should I? Mrs. Ainsworth had an appointment with you at five o'clock yesterday. It was for six, not five. All right, six. Did she turn up? No, but that's nothing unusual. She was apt to change her plans without telling people. Though actually, in this case, I was rather surprised because... Because? Well, she rang me late on Friday night. She sounded frightened. She said she must see me. It was urgent. And then she hung up as if she'd been interrupted. Who oh, by? Her husband? Was it him she was afraid of? No, of course not. Well, who else would interrupt her at that hour? Hmm? I don't know. What's that? About 200 pounds. 200? But Lucille never had any money. She was so extravagant, she was always in debt. Bunch of receipts, not a bill among them. She may have been extravagant, but she doesn't appear to have been in debt. Where did she get it? Ask me again later, Miss Hayward, I might be able to tell you. Shall we go? Good morning. Good morning. Very attractive, unmarried. Carrying a torch for Mr. Ainsworth. I got that impression. Has been known for a woman to strangle. I wonder if she's strong enough. Thank you. When Mr. Ainsworth called on you at your flat about the time of the murder, did you notice anything unusual about his appearance or manner? No, except that he appeared to be a little worried, possibly about the business matters he'd called to discuss. Which was? If it's not a trade secret. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we were on the point of making a very sizable loan to a small European government. Indeed, we'd gone so far as to commit ourselves. Then our government stopped it on advice from the Foreign Office. Did you notice the bruise on his forehead? Bruise? Oh, come, Mr. Morgan, you couldn't have failed to see that. Mr. Ainsworth had no bruise when he called at my flat. But I understand he did hit his head later on leaving, you know, in his car. It's pretty easy to do if you're preoccupied or worried. You mustn't waste your time on Mr. Ainsworth. He's not the type of man to commit a crime like this. You admire him? Yes, I do. Very much indeed. And Mrs. Ainsworth? You can rely on my discretion, Mr. Morgan. I don't admire her in the manner which you imply. Since she's dead, I prefer to speak no ill of her. More than that, I'm not prepared to say. Does she have a bank account here? No, we don't handle private accounts. We're merchant bankers, you know. We make rather large loans to businesses and governments and so forth. She had a lot of money. She had a very generous husband. Yes, very generous, considering the money that seems to have passed through her hands. I know nothing of Mrs. Ainsworth's private affairs. I just got your hand, Mr. Morgan. My, oh, this. <laughs> She's no business here, of course, but she refuses to stay at home. She must hear a lot of secrets. She does. But she's unable to repeat them, Inspector. David Bradley's party? No. 
We would have gone, but I feel so sorry for my friends, always seeing me in the same old dress. I went to a cinema in the afternoon and got home about six. My husband then put his feet up while I cooked the dinner. I'm a good cook. I have to be. We have no maid. We had dinner at seven, then we watched television until the thing closed for the night. Not a moment too soon. It was mostly boxing. My husband loves manly sports. Well, knowing Mrs. Ainsworth, do you think she might have gone to the Heath to meet a man? A man? <laughs> you dear, sweet, innocent thing. What else would you have gone to meet? A mouse? <laughs> Would you come in, Mr. Baring, please? Thank you. Thank you. Taxi driver. Ah, oh, good morning. Good morning. Take a seat. Thank you. Perhaps you can help us. You recognize this woman? Yes. I picked this lady up in Priory Crescent on the corner at about six o'clock on Saturday night, and I dropped her at the top of Platts Lane. You're quite sure that's the one? Of course I'm sure. A little blonde piece. Was she frightened or scared? Well, not so as to notice. But there was this car coming along behind us, following us like, all the way from Priory Crescent, big black saloon. What make? Oh, I didn't see that. He kept too far back. What happened when you got to Platts Lane? Well, he stopped, and then he parked a bit up the road. I didn't detach nothing to that. Right. Well, thank you. We'll be in touch with you. We got your number, haven't yeah. we? Yes, sir. Well, that's one lead. Now, what about this material? We got the thing on that thread found under a fingernail yet? Yes, sir, I've got it here. They haven't been able to trace the material back to the manufacturers yet, but it's a heavy, dark grey material with a rough surface, rather like Harris Tweed. Good. Your boy's still dragging that pond? I finished that one, sir. Started on the next. All right, keep them at it. There's about six more. Very good, sir. Get rid of this lot, will you? Finish them off. Yes, sir. By the way, what was Ainsworth's car? Lagonda, sir. Black saloon. Hmm. Be back soon. Want to have a look at Priory Crescent? I must find out whom Mrs. Ainsworth saw here. It's very urgent. Well, now, it could have been Mr. Franklin. He's always got women up there. Artists, supposed to be. <laughs> Lord knows what goes on, but my poor old legs. Is he you know, in? They went... I don't know. You better go up and see. He's at the top. Here, while you're up there, ask him about my rent, will you? It's a month overdue now. Come in. Mr. Franklin. Well, the perfect example of a prosperous city magnet. Come in and shut the door. It's cold enough in here as it is. You Lucille's husband? Yes. It's a terrible thing. I'm sorry. I'd offer you some coffee, but it's cold. Why did my wife come here? She commissioned it for you. It's a present for your wedding anniversary. I used to take her to your house on Friday. Do you like it? No. Why did she go up to the Heath? I don't know. She said she was meeting somebody. How did you know she was here? That's my business. Did you follow her? I must have done. <laughs> well, well. Were you lovers? <laughs> no. I doubt if anybody ever really possessed her. That's what made her so fascinating, so unobtainable. You've taken away all her natural dignity and charm. You made her look like a cheap trollop. I understood her. Rubbish. Well, what are you going to do with it? You can have it. Lucille hasn't paid for it. The price is 300 pounds. 300 for that? It's worth more now, Ainsworth. Oh, no, it won't. she was wearing when she was killed. I'll take that. Well, for a sick man, you seem to be doing all right. He's the man, Inspector. He killed my wife. I never murdered a woman in my life. Except on canvas. Besides, you owed me 200 pounds for the portrait. If I wanted to kill her, I'd have waited until I got the money. If you didn't kill her, how'd you get the brooch? Do you mind if I ask the questions, Mr. Ainsworth? 
Not at all. I know what Yes, I know, I know, I know. But I think I'd better handle it. Let me free to wait, really. I know where to contact you. If you insist. I do. All right. Well, where did you get this brooch? It's left it left here. Just like that? I pulled it off. It is in my way. Or isn't that explicit enough? When? About 5.30 on Saturday. I didn't kill her. I know the brooch looked suspicious, but she really did leave it here. In fact, I tried to flog it after she'd gone. Who to? Oh, Billy has a coffee stall around the corner. I stay there till 6.15. I'm surprised he didn't tell you. I was sure he would. We can always ask him. Is this the coat you were wearing on Saturday? The only one I've got. Hmm, nice piece of cloth. If you left the coffee stall at 6.15, where'd you go from there? Hampstead Heath. Sheer coincidence. I went to the Spaniards. It's quite a distance from where she was killed, you know. I got there at 8 o'clock. Somebody can probably vouch for that. I'm well known there. How did you go? I walked up West Hill, round by Hampstead Lane. I mean, it's sort of half circle. What in a hurry. It took me till 8. Now, if you'd have made your half circle to the south instead of to the north, you'd have passed near enough to Mrs. Ainsworth to kill her. Yes. But not in time. I couldn't have got from the coffee stall to that particular spot in time to kill her. Try it and see. Don't worry. We shall. Anyway, it seems someone met her there and killed her. Hmm? My successor, I presume. Do you know his name? Yes, John Langford. Can you understand why he should want to kill her? Yes, I can. Easily. Anyone. Why? I'm glad she's dead. I feel free for the first time since I've known her. She obsessed me. She... I couldn't live with her. I couldn't live without her. She had everything and nothing. She looked passionate. She was sexless. She had the face of truth. She didn't know the meaning of the word. She was an illusion. Nothing. I'm glad she's dead. One day I'll start to miss her. But not yet. Robert, what's happening? Come in. It's all right. I know whom Lucille saw on Saturday. A man called Frank Lang, an artist. We've been in contact. Unfortunately, the inspector turned up in the middle of it. You knew she was seeing this man, didn't you? I didn't know who it was, but I knew there was someone. So did I. But this clinched it for me. I got it on Friday, just before that dreadful dinner party. Your wife is leading a double life. She's associating with a mad man. If this does not stop, the writer will take further steps, which will cause trouble and unhappiness for all concerned. Have you shown it to the inspector? How can I? It gives me a motive. But it gives the writer a motive, too. Robert, you must tell him the truth. I can't. But he can't suspect you anyway. You were with Gilbert Morgan. I wasn't. What? Then why? Robert, you must tell me the truth. Whatever's happened, I want to help you, but don't lie to me. I won't blame you, Robert. I know how she provoked you, how cruel she was to you. You must be out of your mind. I followed Lucille, I followed her to Franklin's and then to the Heath. She was there with a man, but I came away and left her. I didn't kill her. Then tell the inspector. He can't prove you killed her if you didn't. Why not? He's out for promotion, not justice. I don't believe that. At least he's honest. And he's no fool. No, that's my one hope, that he'll catch the real murderer before he catches me. Thank you, Sarah. You're a good friend. Yes. A good friend. Don't you know how much I love you? Did you hate Lucille? Now I know you didn't kill her. You suspect me. <laughs> oh, Sarah, darling, Sarah, I'm, I'm sorry. But I'm, I'm beyond making sense out of anything anymore. Listen, you must help me. Of course I'll help you. It's 
that's right. Stick up for her. I don't care if she is dead. Running around after everybody's husband. You most of all. And stop smiling in that idiotic way. Stop it. Stop it. Who are you? Detective Inspector Marshall. You're just in time, Inspector. We're in the middle of disturbing the peace, as usual. I want to talk to you about Mrs. Ainsworth. Go right ahead. We were just talking about her, weren't we, John? We all adored her, especially John. Shut up, Nella. Tell the nice Inspector how you used to take her out and how she used to let you hold her hand. All right. So I did, sometimes. She was a wicked little thing, but I adored her. So did every man in his heart, married or not. She was a liar and a cheat, just like you are. They were lovers, Inspector, but they even had to cheat each other. Go on, John. Tell him how you killed Lucille. Go on, tell him. You won't be able to keep it a secret much longer. Be quiet. He soon found out what she was, like they all did. Every man she ever... I was at home with you all evening. You went out at six and you came home at midnight. You were pale as death and drunk as an owl. Look what he did to me because I asked him where he'd been that evening. He wouldn't think he could be so violent, would you, to look at him? That was nothing new. She's jealous, that's all. She adores making sense. Then where were you on Saturday night? Well, where were you? I was... <laughs> oh. <laughs> you only knew how idiotic you look. You better come with me. This yours? I'll take that too. You're not really going to take him, Inspector. I only meant... You've said enough, Mrs. Langford. I didn't mean... Let's go. No! Oh, John! No! Inspector! No, wait. We can't leave it like that. No! Nella really did believe I killed Lucille. I've been out with Lucille once or twice, just to get away from Nella. The trouble was, Nella really loved me. That's what made her so insanely jealous. She'd even written an anonymous letter to Robert. That's what we were quarreling about when you arrived. But it was true what she said. You weren't home on Saturday night. Yes. Where were you then? I went to a club to have a few drinks. We were there from about half past six until ten o'clock. Ask the barman, he'll remember us. Us? I was there with a friend. What's your friend's name? Julie Maddox. She's an actress of sorts. We went back to a flat. That's why I couldn't tell Nella where I'd been. But you were also in love with Mrs. Ainsworth. I've never been a one-woman man, Inspector. Nella's nagged me about it ever since the day we were married. I've even hit her occasionally. But she did ask for it. She must have seen that. She'd get quite hysterical and... swear she'd do herself in. Did you ever give Mrs. Ainsworth any money? Money? <laughs> I haven't got any money. Not what she meant by money. What was the name of the club you went to with this, uh, this other girl? Oh, I don't know. The Flora Bell Club, I think. When you got home on Saturday night, was your wife in? She was in all evening. How do you know if you weren't there? But surely you don't think that Nella killed? If she did, we'll have a hell of a job proving it now, won't we? Well, frankly, I'm worried. Marshall isn't going to leave us alone. He must know we're lying. He nearly caught me out about that bruise of yours. I'm desperately sorry, Gilbert, getting you into this mess. He can get us both now as accessories after the fact. And what about the bank? This is going to ruin us. If only we can hang on for a day or so. Well, I thought of that. Now, how would it be if I slipped over to our Paris office for a few days? I ought to go, you know, in any case. If I'm in Paris, I can't be questioned. The inspector's hardly likely to follow me there. It might be safer if I went. Oh, no. He'd smell a rat if you went. After all, you're a suspect. I think I'll go at once. I'll go home now and pack a bag. Yes, it'll give us a respite anyway. Well, you'll find me at the Frontenac. You might let the inspector know that, will you? It'll reassure him. Oh. Will you take care of Sasha for me? Yes, of course. Thank you, Gilbert. I won't forget this. Good luck, Robert. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Good, sir. What have you got there? Well, this is the result of our little fishing expedition up on the heath. You beat the Flora Bell yet? Yes, Lank was there all right. The barman vouched for him and the secretary. And I saw that little Julie bit. Nothing there. What's all this? 
The contents of Mrs. Ainsworth's handbag, sir. How'd you know? I showed them to her maid. She identified them. We found them in that pond up by the Spaniards. It was the fifth one we dragged. Oh, I thought they'd turn up. They won't be any good to us, though. No fingerprints on them. Well, disposes of the robbery motive anyway, sir. I never believed that anyway. Oh, sir, here's a sample of that grey coat cloth from the manufacturers. They distributed half a million yards of the stuff in the last six months. That's a lot of coats, sir. What about the Franklin alibi? Have you checked that? Yes. The storekeeper confirms he was there at about 6.15, complete with brooch. I covered the whole distance twice myself. He couldn't have got the Heath in time to kill her. Mm, that's fine. Everyone accounted for except Nella Langford. Sarah Haywood. <laughs> oh, she was at Bradley's cocktail do. She's OK. Everyone accounted for, or so they say. Somebody lying. I think it's Ainsworth. Wait a minute. Where did Mrs. Ainsworth get her money? Those receipts in the desk were worth about 3,000 pounds. All things for herself, jewelry, clothing, beauty treatments. All paid for in cash. Surely a banker's wife would pay by check. Unless she found a gold mine, sir. Who is he? I'm going to do some prospecting. Come on, Casanova. Where do I find the man? Under the desk. Visitors. Oh. Good afternoon. I'm Colonel Jarvis, the secretary. I don't think I know you, gentlemen. Detective Inspector Marshall, Sergeant Bay. Sir? It's Mrs. Ainsworth I want to talk to you about. I believe she came here pretty often. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Wouldn't you? I've got five receipts here, signed by you for Mrs. Ainsworth's bridge and poker debts. She's lost about 600 pounds here in the last few weeks. Well, naturally, we're only too anxious to cooperate, Inspector, but our members expect their affairs to be treated in the strictest confidence. They shouldn't get themselves murdered, then, should they? She pay by check or by cash? Cash, always. She had plenty. Anyone ever help her out, pay for her? Not to my knowledge. Let's talk to your barman. I'm sure he can't tell you any more than I can. Just the same, let's talk to him. Hmm? Excuse me. Afternoon. Afternoon, sir. You knew Mrs. Ainsworth, didn't you? Yes, sir. Where'd she get her money? Well, sir, there were plenty of men ready to finance her, sir. She could pick and choose. They'd need deep pockets. There's Mr. Goodman. He'd fit the bill. Goodman. Bernard Goodman, the bookie. I never saw a man with so much money. But me, God, he's doing me to breathe. Of course, he had to lay a bit out on Mrs. Ainsworth because he was doing some shopping there. Has he been in today? He hasn't been in since she was murdered. I'm telling a lie. That's him now. The coat, sir. Mr. Bernard Goodman? That's me. Now, look, let me save your breath. I wasn't in London on Saturday. Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I was in Birmingham for the races. I'm a racing man. I only got back today. Look, hotel bills, theatre tickets, a menu. Look, I can account for every minute of my time. Go and check it. Check it. Go and check the lot. Only remember, please, I'm a very busy man. What's this? We suspect the murderer was wearing a coat similar to this. To this? I only bought it this morning. It's not new. Did anyone say it was new? I got it from a client of mine, a humble fella, a porter. He owed me a fiver. He came to my office this morning. He says to me, Mr. Goodman, I owe you a fiver. I haven't got a fiver. Will you take the coat instead? Uh, I'm soft in there, so I took the coat. Right, let's have a look at it. The tailor's name's been taken out. Didn't that make you suspicious? Mister, I'm 57 years old. Everything makes me suspicious. I'm just a crazy, mixed-up old man. I took the coat. Mrs. Ainsworth was a heavy spender. Did you finance her? No, I, I bought her a few drinks, had a couple of dinners. That's all, no more than that. Uh, mister, I don't give, I buy. She, she had that uh, come and get it look, but uh, when you came, she rung up no sale. Did she ever try to get any money out of you by other means? Like what other means? Like blackmail, for instance. <sighs> I'd have broken her neck. You don't defend her? Uh, mister, she was no good. Look, do, do I look like the kind of man who would entertain his woman friends on Hampstead Heath? Uh, I've got rheumatism. I've got blood pressure. I've got a weak heart. All right, all right. You can show us your operation tomorrow. Now tell us where we can find the porter who gave you the coat. But Gilbert Morgan lives here. This is the address Goodman gave us. Come on, let's go and see this porter. Why didn't you come forward and tell me he gave you this coat? Well, the papers never said nothing about an overcoat. Just some threads or something caught underneath the fingernails. But didn't you think it odd he should suddenly hand you down a coat like this one? No, I didn't. Mr. Morgan was always handing me down his clothes when he'd had enough of them for the Salvation Army. Give me a suit as well as that coat and some socks and shoes. I sent them up this morning. Except the overcoat. Why'd you offer it to Bernard Goodman? Why him? 
Because I owed him money, like I told you. All the blokes around here bets with Goodman. He's got an office over in Baker Street. Well, he's a very fair man if you pay him. If you don't, he takes something off you, like that overcoat. He's got off my furniture up in his office. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Take us up to Mr. Morgan's flat. It's no good you going up there. He's gone. Gone? Where? I don't know. Took off in his car about 20 minutes ago. Took all his luggage with him, too. Mr. Morgan? Why did you kill her? I didn't kill her. You were on the heat, Mr. Morgan. We tested your overcoat. We found dust and gorse pollen. I'm quite sure you did. I live up there. I often walk on the heath. And so do a lot of other people, too. Why were you trying to leave the country? I'm trying to help Robert preserve his alibi. Which is false, isn't it? But you weren't going for a few days, Mr. Morgan. You were going for good, and you were taking half the bank with you. Well, you're a thief, but nothing worse. If you weren't worried about the coat, why did you try to get rid of it? Because I knew you were looking for a dark grey overcoat. How? How did you know? Well, I read in the paper. Some threads were found in Lucille's nail. Threads, yes, but how did you know they came from a coat like that? Only the police knew that. And the murderer. <coughs> you met her on the heath, didn't you? Yes, I did. But I didn't kill her. I just met her and I was only with her for a few minutes. Was she blackmailing you? Yes. See, I... Well, some years ago, I embezzled some money from the bank. I meant to pay it back. Indeed, I could have done so, but... Lucille discovered this and threatened to expose me if I didn't settle her debts for her. She ruined my life with her constant demands and threats for money. Why did you kill her? To keep her quiet? I didn't kill her. I met her on the heath, yes. I met her to give her the money. I suddenly decided that I wouldn't give it to her. I told her I hadn't got it. She'd wait. She'd have to wait. She was absolutely furious. She again threatened to expose me to Robert, but I, I said I didn't care a damn what she did. I got beyond caring. So I went away and I left her. All I wanted to do was to get out of the country before she had time to give me away. It was a struggle, Mr. Morgan. She tore your coat. Her nails were broken. I know. She didn't want me to leave her. I pushed her off with my hand. A cat didn't scratch her hand. She scratched it, didn't she? No, I scratched my hand on the pin of her brooch. <laughs> she wasn't wearing her brooch. But she was wearing it. I know that Franklin had it. Robert told me that. But I couldn't tell you that she was wearing it, could I, without revealing that I was with her? There is a stain on it, but that doesn't prove a thing. Franklin must have given it back to her. He must have. He went back, gave her back the brooch. Then he hung around, waiting to see who she was meeting. Then he waylaid her on the way to the road, fuddled with her, and strangled her. But why did he take the brooch back again? Hmm. Because he'd been seen with the brooch earlier at the coffee stall. If the brooch was found on her body, it proved he'd seen her again. How did he get there in time? <laughs> If you took a shortcut across that siding, where'd you come out? Look. It is. It's him. That's how he got to the heath. He jumped a truck. That's our man. Come on.
Thank goodness none of the others were charged. I thought the inspector was quite capable of it. Mm, it wasn't so bad, really. Well, I'd better be going. How long will you be in America? Not long. After all, it is on business. And it's best to go away for a time, anyway. Well, goodbye, sir. And thank you again very much. You will come back, Robert. Yes, I'll come back. Mm -hmm.